else about uh, this alley, so to speak, that would make it more prone to the big hail? There could be. There could be some terrain in play or something like that. I don't know specifically about that, but it is interesting that you're seeing right. so much in that same spot for sure. And if you live in these areas, I think you just either have to say, we definitely have a garage or I'm going to just drive a beater. <laughs> I, it's tough. I mean, if you don't have a garage, I mean, every once in a while you're going to have one of these amazing hailstorms, and that is the, the place from Texas up through Kansas, Oklahoma, Nebraska. That's where you get the largest hailstorms. Yeah, the insurance adjusters at work. It'll be interesting to see the money, the cost on this one. Thank right. you, Carl. Mm -hmm. Ryan, over to you. Severe with all the people have questions about hail, too. Right, just as we were talking about earlier before the break, Tanner was wondering why because gravity is constant, don't all the hailstones fall at the same rate? That's a really, really solid question. Yeah, and because you've got more air friction, essentially, when you've got uh, an object that doesn't weigh as much, there's more air resistance. And when you've got a heavy object, you're not getting as much resistance, so it falls more quickly. Very good, yeah. Tanner. Thank you for your question this evening. Let's get to them. The next one is from Michael. Michael, thanks for your question tonight. What has caused the weather pattern in the U.S. to be so active over the last few weeks. Oh, that darn jet stream, huh? Yeah. It's that been, time of the year. Yeah. You know, we, we, we call it, so two, two basic principles of, of jet stream flow. Zonal flow, which is your basic flat pattern, west to east flow, or meridiano flow, which is this big undulating north to south flow. And we've had that the past mm -hmm. couple we've of weeks. Yeah, and, and things have been active, and in some cases for some of the same areas, too. Uh, and it's been either snow or, wet. or it's been wet and it's been stormy yeah. or as the case in the west when you're in the effects of a ridge it's been record setting hot. Yeah, and when you have that meridional flow, you have what's called differential advection. So you've got more warm air coming well to the north and cold air coming well to the south, and you get more instability as a result. You get more of a clash and a stronger jet stream, and that increases the lift in the atmosphere, and everything just really magnifies mm -hmm. when you have that kind of a and pattern. storms just yeah. go, don't they? All right, next. Next one is from Dave. Dave, thank you for your question tonight. In a cluster of thunderstorms, can the cold downburst from one cut off the hot updraft of another and kill it. Absolutely, and that happens all the time. That's the way the tornadoes die, is you've got this warm and humid flow that's feeding into the updraft and right where the tornado is, and cool air wraps around the backside. And some of that is necessary, actually, to get the tornado right. going, but eventually it can overwhelm the inflow, and once mm -hmm. it happens, it chokes it off, and then the whole thing begins to weaken. That, that, cold, that cold air is a lot denser and doesn't rise as rapidly as that warm, yes. humid air, so it keeps everything concentrated toward the ground and just eventually exactly. dies. Next question is from Caleb. Caleb, thanks for your question, too. Is the bottom part of the cloud, is it dark? Does that mean there is precipitable water available? So, you know, there are a couple of different things that are happening here. First of all, the, the reason why the bottom part of the cloud is dark is because it's a very tall cloud, so it's just mm -hmm. blocking out sunlight. Right. There is a lot of water in it, but when we talk about precipitable water, that's specifically referring to the column of air that extends over many miles, you know, going all the way up through the atmosphere. When we talk about, you know, having two inches of precipitable water, that's how much rain could occur in that spot if you were to precipitate all of the moisture out of the atmosphere. So it refers to a large-scale phen phenomenon. Phenomenon. So, you know, I, I guess, you know, technically you do have precipitable water yeah. in that cloud. We just don't use it to refer to that. Right. All right. Next one's from Brett. Brett, thanks for your question tonight. I'm 30. I live in Connecticut. And last week was the first time in my life a thunderstorm produced hail I've seen. How rare is hail in New England? I don't it's, think it's super rare. It's I not. think it's I think it just depending on where you live. Obviously, yeah. when you live in Texas, you're going to see more hail. I, mm -hmm. I lived in Pennsylvania. I spent some time in Syracuse. I mean, we had hail storms. They just don't happen quite as frequently. I mean, and, and it becomes more of a summertime thing, yeah. too, than less of a springtime event in New England. I'm totally yeah. with Brett. I mean, I lived on Long Island for the longest time, and I think I only saw hail once in my entire life, and mm. it was only yeah. like maybe nickel or penny sized yeah. hail. Yeah. Uh, so it's, next one. Yeah, it's not, do, it do can't it's happen. Not, it it's can. just, it's not right. common. Right. Um, hold off on that one. I'm holding it. <laughs> we will, holding we will, it. Who, is it, who is it from? It is from Lynn. Lynn. Six pack to finish up because we got to get to your votes. We had a top two that were just awesome today. But before we do that, before we crown our winner for today, we're going to show you what else made the top six. How about this one? Rain pouring into a casino in Vegas. This is the Plaza Hotel and Casino, and it's all over the gambling tables. What is that? Somebody's drink? Not anymore. It is a blackjack table.
Thank you, Rich, our producer. Number five, lenticular clouds uh, forming. This is National Weather Service out of Anchorage captured this video. It's a 10 minute time lapse of that lenticular cloud. Beautiful stuff, not to mention the absolutely gorgeous blue sky in the background. Number four, video of a hailstorm in northern Texas. Do you even say this is damaging cars? This is just wrecking these cars. We are seeing front windshields, back windows smashed, side windows. Heck, even people's house windows got damaged out of this one. Different kind of hole. This is a sinkhole in California, Madera, California. The Madera Police Department took this video. Almost looks like it's kind of melting and just caving in. Whatever it is, that's not what you want to see on the road in front of you. I don't know if I'd be that close with my camera No, either. no, no, no. Hopefully they're way back far and they're zoomed in I on hope that's because... they are taking advantage of that Holy Zoom feature. Yeah, scary. All right, two videos are vying for number one tonight. You're voting on Twitter. It was hail inside the house that's insane. versus green shell cloud. Both and that's are gorgeous. Phenomenal. Both phenomenal. Hail in the house, 60%. 40% for the green shelf cloud. So close, but uh, that hail in the house is pretty amazing. Both of them happen in the same place, yes. by the way. So number two, how about this? This is, uh, actually, this is the one this that won. This is number one. This is number one. We're just showing him to you we're in reverse you. order. We're doing it like <laughs> Miss Columbia and oh, Miss yes. Philippines. We're doing like the Steve Harvey yeah. of our video and six pack tonight. And now your winner is, <laughs> oh wait, this is the winner. <laughs> this, was, this was video of hail inside a home and it shattered all the windows here and now it's smashing up against the blinds. That's incredible stuff. I mean, now it's ru ruined your window, it's ruined your blinds <laughs> and it, it scared awesome. the heck out of you. We all said, can you imagine being in this house? Like, yeah. ah, make it stop. Number two. <laughs> what? Oh. Well, it was the Can't it was the green it. shell cloud. It was wah, shot by wah, a drone. Wah. Exactly. Oh, man. Drone buzz, video, but cool buzz stuff. Kill. We'll be right back. So let's sound off. Ryan's here. Um, Ryan? Yes. <laughs> well, I was. Let's just get to the questions. And I'll get to, <laughs> to a point I wanted to make later. Okay. Maybe I'll do it after the show. First one is from Lynn. All right, Lynn, thank you for your question tonight. I live just east of Cleveland uh, near Lake Erie. Had six inches of snow last weekend. Winter weather gone for good? I want to think around Cleveland. I mean, the chances are getting lower, but yeah. it's one of those areas where you can still... Yeah, I mean, it, it's going to get tougher, but yeah. it's not impossible. And, and you're... I'm going to say it's over. You're going to say you're it's gonna over? I'm going to yeah. say it's over because yeah. looking at how temperatures warm through like the next 10 days. Yeah. I mean, that would make it April 21st, the next time it starts yeah. to cool down. Right. Snow even in Cleveland, April 21st is hard to come by. Tougher to come by. You know, what's funny though, is I, I was just in uh, Columbia, Maryland this past weekend and it was snowing. Right? Yeah. So. I just know the one thing to do big Arctic is you coming. don't tell Lynn no more snow because <laughs> yeah. it's going to snow at her house on May 2nd and she's going to come looking for you, Bettis. She's going to come looking for I'm you. Willing, I'm willing, I'm willing <laughs> You're to gonna take do that. It? I'm willing to take that All right. chance. Lynn, I'll give you his address. Lynn, you and me. <laughs> and the latest snows are well into May in a lot of areas. Stop. <laughs> On rest Stop. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Don't get. Lynn, it, it's not going to snow anymore. <laughs> Don't listen to that. June. Just Don't no one in her stop. Stop. It's not out of the question. Okay, the next one is from Grant. <laughs> Grant, thank you for your question. Why can't this upcoming Omega Block last for long periods like the ridiculously resilient ridge? He's well, from Michigan, by the way. Yeah, you know, usually the atmosphere <laughs> is more transitory. Things do tend to move. And we actually don't know why the Triple R was in place for so long. It might have had something to do with something called the PDO, positive phase of the PDO. But uh, it's a bit of a mystery, to be honest. And Omega blocks don't typically last more than two, three, four days yeah, at yeah, most. That right. ridge has been hanging in for, King, has been hanging in some instances. 10, yeah, for 12 the, days. For the better longer? part of the winter, last few winters, yeah. 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 Right, thank you, everyone, for your questions this evening. If you're new to the show and you're on Twitter, use the hashtag WUTV. We answer questions every single night here on the show. Right now, I want to take you on into your weather right now. Hand it over to the lovely and talented Alex Wilson. Oh, you're too kind. Hey, we'll start things off over the Northeast where we do have some snow, Carl Parker, just pointing it out. You know what I mean? It's not out of the question to actually, you know, not, not out of the question to get, get a little snow up into this part of the country. <laughs> Here's tomorrow morning. Uh, the snow has pretty much wrapped wait, up. Did you say snow up I, in New York? I said snow in New York on, that's, what is tomorrow? April that's 13th. Not, that's not very far away from Ohio. It's not clean. <laughs> Lynn. <laughs> Lynn, don't Lynn. It's fine. Lynn Mark is like, I don't know here, what this Lynn, Mike do Bettis not is telling pay attention me. to them, Lynn. Winter's over for you in Cleveland, I promise. We are totally the peanut gallery, Carl. <laughs>
<laughs> hey, by tomorrow morning, you start off with temperatures in the 20s and 30s for a lot of spots. Low 40s, though, from New York down to Philly. How about afternoon temperatures around 60 for Philly and D.C.? Snow showers up around portions of Minnesota, Wisconsin, and the U.P. of Michigan as we start your Wednesday. Notice by the afternoon that continues to move east and really fades away. And we've got sunshine for places like Rapid City. How about a high of 81, 81 in North Platte? Maybe some late day clouds around Rapid City. Here's your forecast across the south central. Notice those thunderstorms are rolling towards Houston, the Gulf Coast through the day tomorrow. Heavy rain will be one of the uh, big stories along the Gulf Coast. Some spots could see three plus inches of rainfall through the end of the week and along the southeast, generally clouds. But again, closer you get to the Gulf Coast, the better chance you have for rain showers, maybe a rumble of thunder. Notice those afternoon temperatures, even with the clouds, will be comfortable in the mid 70s for Montgomery, 70 in Jackson. Weekend forecast looks like this rain and thunderstorms in into parts of the plains. Notice we've got a little wintry weather across sections of Wyoming and Colorado. And then we get into our 